for the first time in about 30 years, I raked leaves. I did. Yeah, you should be very happy for me. I am very happy. It was an experience. Let's go see what the electricians get up to. There's an old curiosity shop. Every once in a while I go by there. For the fond recollections that lie there. In that old curiosity shop. Well, good, good morning, everyone. It's the day after the electricians have left. And boy, uh, was it worth it. Now, uh, we're gonna take a look. <laughs> it was a lot warmer yesterday, you will see. I'm raking the leaves in a short sleeve shirt, but not so today. We're gonna jump from me sipping hot tea on the front porch to uh, a warmer day and the day the electricians came. Now, three electricians came, they worked from morning until sundown and it was an expense yes there was some concessions by the seller we did come to an agreement and the final decision for me was to bring all the electric up to date now before we get into the electrics i don't want to mislead anyone or confuse you into making you think that oh my goodness i've got knob and tube wiring in my house is it going to burn down Probably not. No, it's not going to burn down. The issue is that uh, people come along throughout the years and they monkey with the system. As I said before, great in 1925, not so bad in 1932, lovely in 1880. But with all the electronics that we use today, uh, not the best system in the world. This house, very typical. A lot of it had been replaced, but it still showed up in the basement, the attic out here on the porch, a few spots in the kitchen and in one of the bedrooms. Uh, piecemealed together, things spliced in, bad. Get it updated. I don't know if I will ever sell this house. I mean, I'm barely moved in. I haven't really moved in yet at all. But even if this is a house that, for whatever reason, it gets sold in five years, 10 years, 15 years, Someone coming in who's doing bank financing or through a mortgage lender or whatnot, there may be issues with insurance. Get it done before you bring in the mahogany side tables. <laughs> Go through the mess and have it repaired, and that's what I'm doing. I'm saving a few of the old ceramic tubes <laughs> just for posterity's sake. They have, really have no value, but they're cool. Uh, and some of the old original sort of uh, 1920s, uh, sockets well definitely 1920s these were all over the place just naked light bulb sockets this is what was put in in those days so things need to be safe modern you know the last thing that I want to do is be sitting out here operating my curling iron and have my wearing blender blow up in the kitchen yeah We want to be able to operate all those things at the same time. Curling iron, metaphorically speaking. So the electricians are going to be coming back to do a little bit of tweaking. There's a few things that we haven't quite gotten right yet. We had some surprises, nothing horrible. Uh, and a few old light fixtures are here. Some exist, some are going to be replaced. Of course, obviously, I'm working on that as well. Uh, so that's what this video is about today. We're going to take a little bit, you'll have a little bit more of a tour of the place. I'm showing you a little bit at a time. While the electricians uh, were here yesterday, I tried not to be right on top of them. So <clears throat> for the first time in about 30 years, I raked leaves. I did. Yeah, you should be very happy for me. I am very happy. It was an experience. Let's go see what the electricians get up to. Well, good morning, everyone. This will be an exciting day in the attic as well as the basement. Now, I'm here early in the morning and it is cold. Um, anyway, <laughs> I've done absolutely nothing up here. You can see 
I have quite a bit of uh, an area here that's got the old floor on it, and that's the steps that go downstairs to the back. And then all this insulation is just piped in here. But what's happening today is the electricians are coming, and they're going to begin modernizing the electric and getting rid of this knob and tube, which I was talking about a while ago. So I guess let's go... I'll show you just a little bit of it that's still up here in the attic. Um, and if you've got old houses, well, let's turn that off. That didn't work. Okay, hold on. Be right back. Now I guess you can see. So this is an old porcelain socket, which dates to when the house was built, 1925. And here we have the porcelain knobs with the wires covered in cloth. It's a non-ground, these, there's no grounding here. And normally we don't have the tubes up here. I'll show you tubes down in the basement. <clears throat> when you've got to go through a floor joist or ceiling joist or anything like that, that's where the ceramic tubes come into place, hence the knob and tube. So if you leave it alone, it's okay. If you start splicing things into it, as we do in modern times, it is not okay. And this is what's not okay right here. Of course, back in the 20s, when this house was built, there wasn't a whole lot going on in terms of electrical appliances. And this, uh, the amount of wiring and the amps on your breaker were just fine. But in modern days, because um, of insurance and just peace of mind, going to have it replaced. I'm not sure where this went. I've not figured that out yet. I can't see any place where anything like that is missing, but I don't know. As I said, this old wardrobe was already here uh, when I arrived. So I can't wait for the electricians to arrive. Let's go take a look at some of the knob and tube wiring down in the basement. And this actually goes up to the front porch. But you can see here where this hasn't been replaced and it goes directly into the box. And this is where this here has got to be taken care of, got to be take, pulled out of there and replaced. Uh, all the other wiring is good. We have a new, <clears throat> relatively new circuit breakers and everything in here is good. This is some old... Uh, telephone wire. This is a, uh, uh, let's see, what have we got here? There's a transformer and some low voltage. That's probably the old doorbell system upstairs. That looks like a very old outlet and an old plug. Uh, let's see. Well, do not remove or disturb. Oh, the old Bell Telephone Company. Okay, well, obviously, this has probably been hanging here since uh, telephone service was installed in into this house. But yeah, here, here, here's where we go up to the outlet uh, in the porch, and that has to be replaced. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's some old newspapers shoved up in here for insulation. I'd love to pull those down and. Of course, we already know the date of the house, so no, no big deal there. Now, what else was I going to show you? And then sneak peek. Here is one uh, corner of the, of the porch, which is a three season porch, really. Um, just to give you an idea, let me back up on this side a little bit more. So the windows on the front are original to the house. And also on the front, the original clapboards and it's the whole, so no vinyl siding on the front. So this can all be repainted. I can really jazz this porch up and do anything I want with paint out here. Right now it's, um, the, it's the paintwork is really in really good condition. And <clears throat> here's the old 1930s porch furniture. <laughs> Somebody was telling me about um, the colors. Oh yeah, this stuff has been repainted. It's all gonna get restored probably sometime next summer. I have no intentions of doing anything to it now. And then I'll have cushions made. But I have a rocker and a armchair. These are both gonna date to uh, the 1930s as well as the table. 
and the lamp uh, goes back to the 20s and this is an old birdcage holder which I'll probably stick um, a Boston fern in there. But this is all in good, really good condition. The furniture, this old furniture, it just needs cushions made for it. Um, and everything needs to be painted, you know, appropriate colors from the 1930s. This window is also an original window and that uh, opens up into uh, what will be the bedroom in the front, the front bedroom. Yeah. Well, I'm going to try to swing around without... There's the neighborhood cat, which I haven't met yet. I don't know if she uh, lives across the street. Let's go see if she will... Um, he or she will come up and speak to us. Oh, she is going to come up. Hi, hi, kitty. Come here. Oh, no. I guess she changed her mind. <laughs> she lives across the street. All right. Well, she looks pregnant. Or maybe she just gets lots of money. Yeah, she's trotting up the driveway across the street. I think she's, uh, I think she's headed home. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and show you this one bedroom here. Uh, it's, a, it's a small house, it's only a two bedroom house. Um, this is the bedroom, and just ignore, this is a holding pen right now. I'm putting a lot of furniture in here because, um, the, this room is good. I'm not having any electrical work done in here. You can see these beautiful floors. The beautiful floors throughout the entire house. No carpeting and all these floors are in absolutely beautiful condition. Oh, let me get the gun. So this bedroom faces the front of the house. That's the window. You can see the lamp, the wicker lamp out there on the front porch. And I'm just storing a bunch of <laughs> furniture and different things in here, but this will be the room, um, probably the room that I use as the, as the uh, bedroom. And it's got um, a fixture here, and that's probably polychromed under there. So eventually I'll take these down and strip the white paint off of them. And then I can uh, restore those ceiling fixtures. Um, but I also have any place where I'm missing an old fixture, I've got, you know, plenty of, lighting fixtures and here, here's one right here. I haven't decided where this is going to go yet, but um, I do like this one a lot. And I, when, when I take these down to have these restored, I might temporarily put, you know, something like this back up. So it is, it would be appropriate for the house. And of course, but I will not get rid of the old original fixtures that were here. Even if I decide that I don't want to use them. They will be restored and they will remain here uh, as long as as, uh, as I'm here so that, you know, they remain with the house. But I haven't really decided yet if I'm going to... I do like, I do like this type of a fixture with the hanging glass shades. It's a little more interesting than um, the naked light bulbs, but we'll get into that later. Yeah, so this is a nice, I think this is about a 12 by 12 size room. I can't remember. Um, there's the only closet in the house. <laughs> and um, my mother was remembering when she was walking around in here, she grew up in a house built around this time. And again, no closets. Her mother and father both had chiffre robes like everybody did in that era. So closets hadn't really, weren't really, well in small houses like this anyway. Um, you just didn't have much closet space. Okay, so that's, uh, that's, uh, have you seen the movie, The Air with Hercule with David Suchet as Poirot? It's great. Now I'm going to read the book. I just picked that up. It's actually a first edition. Um, got it for five bucks. Uh, so I'm going to sit down and read the Halloween party and see if it's any different from the BBC version, uh, on the mystery channel. Okay. All right, I'm standing at my front door, but in order to uh, make it safe uh, for the light out here on the porch, we had to go in and this will all be repaired. It's part of the job. 
there it is. There's the old ceramic tube that comes through the ceiling. Okay. Knob and tube. That's it. Well, with the sound of a barking dog up the street and the men drilling holes in my beautiful plaster walls inside, <laughs> my neighbor keeps his front yard so beautifully done. I went and I found this ancient rake down in the basement. He said, I don't have to go out and buy a new rake. I haven't raked leaves <laughs> in years. I did own uh, before I owned my condo in Philly, I owned a townhouse years ago, but I didn't have to do any lawn work there. So let me get to raking up these leaves and then I've got to figure out something with this drain pipe. That's not going to work. Okay, I guess this comes with the territory. I can't believe I already filled half a barrel of leaves and if I see a snake I'm going back to Philly I know there's snails in here I've already seen them Ooh, this, these are all wet I better get used to this oh it's nasty I've lived in center I've lived on the eighth floor of a of a condo building for almost 20 well yeah almost 20 years oh i'm gonna fill this bucket up what am i gonna do with all these leaves oh i'm gonna go have some cider right up there it's got it daniel got it so from the ceiling it's gonna come down and they found an antique they were digging around in the wall look at this old socket it was covered up so there were lights here, of course, at one time. This has been here and they just, they cut the wires off, taped it and covered it up. Mm. Well, we haven't found any skeletons yet. Well, while the electricians are at my house, we're going to move the thermostat to a better location than it's that it, other than where it currently is. And so he said, go and get yourself a new thermostat. And so that's what I did. Anyway, I'm getting my two bacon and egg wake up wraps. I've been awake for a while, quite a while, but it's lunchtime and I'm hungry. And then I'll get back and we'll get this new thermostat hooked up, get this place Bring this 1925 bungalow into the new century. Well, some more good news. We thought we were gonna to have to kill the ceiling light, as I mentioned earlier. And I had two electricians come here to have two different estimates, and they both told me the same thing independently. So I believed what both of them were saying, uh, but the electrician that's here today was able to figure out how to do it. Um, so there will not be a sconce on the wall on the outside of the house, which is fine with me. I'm happy to be able to preserve the porch light right here in the center. So I don't know what I'm going to put up there yet. Something old fashioned and from the 1920s or thirties, but that's the old porcelain socket that's been up there. A good old Leviton since 1925. Um, we'll probably salvage this and put some type of a globe in there. So that's good news. I don't know. Here's my new thermostat. Looks like something from outer space.
And here's another good example. Now this gives us the anatomy of the inside or the reverse side of the uh, plaster wall. So we can see the lath across here and the plaster which is pushed through. And it's supposed to seep through like this. That's what has, that's what grips the plaster and holds it to the wall. The plasters have to push on the plaster to get it to squeeze through these, the little lath pieces here. And there's a name for that. I forget what the plasters call it. Um, and then again, here's the new wiring and one of the old knobs, which will just be remain, which will remain entombed inside of that wall. You know, these are fun, but they're very difficult to get out. You, here's a little rubber insulator here that they, they usually dry rot. You can peel that off and then grab the nail, either cut the head of the nail off with a Dremel tool or something, and then you can pull these out, but there's really no resale value in them or anything such as that. Any old Confederate money down there? I doubt it since we're up here in New Jersey.